Welcome to Sports Corner. I'm Brooke Kenyon, your host. Today, we are speaking about women's hockey here in Canada and how it's seen as a feminist killjoy in respect to the game we know and love. For years, female athletes here in Canada, specifically in the sport of hockey, have been compared and contrasted to that of the NHL, known as the National Hockey League. Yet, due to the gendered world in which we live in presently in society, a defined box, so to speak, has been given to women in the sport. They are told if they don't portray a sexy image, they can't sell that product. And yet, if they are too sexy, they won't be taken seriously. The words, you have to earn it, will be told to them relentlessly throughout their journey and sacrifices are forced to be made in order to grow the game. These sacrifices have led to what Sarah Ahmed would describe as a killjoy. In Ahmed's writing, she discusses the collecting of evidence and when there is nowhere to go with such findings, you just keep adding it to the archive, building it up. The archive will then become full of proof that you matter, that you are valued, and that people care. And then at a time will come and you'll need that evidence. And however, one must understand that the evidence of walls does not bring the walls down, according to Sarah. In reference to women's hockey, these walls, so to speak, are constructed by the male domination in the sport. And when we try to break down these walls, there will always be those requesting for more evidence in order to provide substance for the argument that women in the game provide value. This idea was prevalent in 2019 National Women's Hockey League. The, um, they hit the uh, social media channels with the hashtag for the game. Female hockey players boycotted the sport in hopes of bringing awareness to the lack of resources for women in that sport and looked to create a sustainable and professional league. The archive that had been built up for years finally came to fruition and was used to build an argument that women deserve to play. But did it make progress? Yes, yes it did, but drastically no. This can be credited to the pop culture ideology we discussed and how we define the nation here in Canada, which is inherently sovereign, yet limited. The female hockey players of Canada are looking to find happiness, which according to Ahmed, is meaning purpose and order to human existence. And there is no goal in life which commands such a high degree of consensus, Stutzer argues as well. Female hockey players have fought for many years for a seat at the table, and it is when they achieve this happiness wish, a social norm will be created, and it will then become a social good. Women have been given this domestic ideology limitation that in return has stayed with us for centuries, making each move within our societal norms draining. Women in sports should not be a killjoy. It should be a moment in our history and in our present day that we are proud to say we have in our great nation. But due to the pressures and the lack of resources here in Canada, the fame drain has taken place and many women have chosen to reallocate their time, money, and ultimately relocate to better leagues that offer a platform for high intensity collaboration and skill. The NWHL continues to provide a strong platform for female athletes, and I will continue to cheer them on each and every season. I hope you join me, because if we don't work together to overcome this unhappiness within women in sport and support the empowering women hitting the ice each and every day, the killjoy of women in hockey will never dissipate. And after taking this class this semester and focusing here on this video about women in hockey, it is clear that a revolution will not occur until we have inclusion.